From Fifth Avenue to Main Street, the hemlines rise and fall. The bustles blossom and disappear. The hips grow broad and narrow with the changing fashions. But the big windows in the department stores don't tell the story of the dress business. That story is in the New York Garment Center. Half a mile square and two blocks high, the billion dollar dress capital of America, built on a bolt of cloth and a foolish question. How do I look? The lives and fortunes of hundreds of thousands of people hang on the answer to that question. And this is the story of a few of them. There was a man named Sam Cooper, a fellow named Teddy Sherman, and, oh yes, there was a girl. And if you wait another year, it'll be two years. Then ten years and you'll never do it. But I tell you, Harriet, she still says no. And I tell you, Sam, she's got to say yes. How can I make her say yes if you keep saying no? She said yes when you married her. Twenty years ago. She lost the habit. I'll talk to her myself. It won't do any good. Sam, tell her to come into town today. I'll convince her. We'll meet for lunch. But we live all the way out in Long Island. But it's still America. She doesn't need a passport. Sam, this means our whole future. All right. But even if she comes and she says yes, the two of us alone is no good. Are you going to talk to Teddy? I'm not so sure he's right for us. Believe me, he's the best. At least talk to him. What's to be afraid? I'll think about it. Just leave it to me. Haven't I left everything to you? That number 807 is going like uranium. And what I've got is worth more than uranium. Oh, uh, they want you out there, Sam. <laughs> and you too, Harriet, in 807. Oh, I'm so pooped. It's like living in a malted milk machine out there. Yeah? The smorgasbord has arrived, mesdames. Well, submerge and enter. I don't wish to be blinded by your radiant beauty. Who's indecent? I am. Okay, I'm not equipped with radar, so brief me. Where do I go? About face and square. Hey, wait a minute. Is Miss Boyd present? Miss Boyd is present. I have a communication. Teddy Sherman, our ace salesman, is back from his triumphant march through Georgia. He sends you his love. Tell him I refuse delivery. What's he doing? Boasting, what else? He sold a billion dollars worth of dresses. The owners of this sweatshop are on their knees kissing his shoes. But why bother with him when I got two passes to the Roxy? Wait till you cut your second teeth. That's a date, Miss Boyd. In the meantime, Mrs. Pulver, Marco, Kelly, and Bettini request your presence at once. The buyers are waiting in the main torture chamber. Oh, Harriet, look out for number one. A material thing. Tell me one thing, Miss Boyd. If I had money, could you learn to love me for my money? Number 807-1095. Number 807-1095. The lead number of our line, Savage, that's the hottest number we've had in four years. Yeah. I can show you the orders, even I don't believe them. No. Now, we've got it in a full range of colors, including the new and sensational Rivera Bays. That's exclusive with us. Now, what did you say this material was? That's a Swanson and Mead cotton, and you can also get it in a Bemberg rayon. Miss, come a little closer here, please. Oh, yes, very good. Yeah, that's a nice number. <clears throat> Say, miss, I think I've seen you here before. Yes, you're the young lady who says she goes to night school. Or did you say you have a sick mother? I've said both, Mr. Savage. <laughs> <laughs> Harriet, where's Fran? What's happened to her? She's changing, Mr. Pulpermacker. Ida, tell Fran to hurry. And you, Harriet, uh, Teddy wants to show 807. And Ida, if you see Four Eyes, tell him it's time for my milk. Hello, Miss Pearson. When did you get to town? Is she coming? She's coming. What are you afraid of? It shows. Like a plunging neckline. Hey, how about that 807? Well, <laughs> Miss Boyd. Well, come on, honey. Hurry it up. I could be getting rich. Are you going to talk to him? I haven't decided yet. Decide, Harriet. If my wife says yes, we mustn't give her a chance to change her mind. This 807 is the biggest thing we've got, and I want you to go all out on it. I still like that last one. The last one? I wouldn't sell it to you. It's positively a dog. 
And, honey, listen, you do understand about tonight, don't you? Oh, yes. I believe you were saying something about standing me up. <laughs> Absolutely not. You and I are definitely doing the town tonight, if I can break away. Number 807, 1095. Well, now, here we are. This is Paul Butkill's 807, and there's nothing in the 1095 field to compare with it. Not bad. Any chance for an exclusive? Well, spit on your pencil, write me some big numbers, I'll see what I can do. Miss Boyd, if you please, I'd like Miss Griggs to see this one to best advantage. <laughs> what are you doing for lunch? Fasting. What about tonight? Reading a small print from women's wear to my blind grandmother. Very funny. <laughs> well? I see you're having trouble getting an exclusive, too. Honey, are you kidding? I'm an old friend of the family. <laughs> I can use 50 units. 50? Look, I'm going to do something for you I wouldn't do for anyone else. Harriet, on your way out, tell Ida to bring me that reorder blank for 50. I thought you were on a buying spree. You're taking me out to dinner, aren't you? Let's see what else you can talk me into tonight. Well, sure, you know I want to take you. It's only that... Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get on the phone right now and see if I can't break that other date. Miss Boyd? I am going to give you another crack at the giant jackpot. The invitation to dinner is still open. Oh, now, is this a nice way to greet a fellow who's been on the road for four months? Has it been that long? I never knew the time to pass so quickly or so pleasantly. Honey, I like the way you're finding it, but you know, somewhere... Look out! Milk for Mr. Povermacher's ulcer. Somewhere you've gotten a very false impression Teddy, of my character. Teddy, darling! Oh, it's so good to Honey, see you. Honey, control yourself. You'll wrinkle the merchandise. Now, what time tonight? Hmm? What time tonight? Oh, I don't think Fran would like it. And then there's Miss Griggs. Oh, now, honey. You know, the way to keep happy, Miss Marks, is to keep busy. My expense account. What is this, Mr. Sherman? Lunches and dinners or the budget for the Marshall Plan? I would appreciate silence and a check. I got something I want to say to you. What? I am madly in love with you. What's the most expensive restaurant they'll let you into? When? Tonight. Boy! At your service. I want my check cash before the banks close. And to think that for six months she wouldn't even say hello to me in front of witnesses. Right. You know, you got to purge your mind of old-fashioned ideas. Forget these traveling salesman jokes. See the real Teddy Sherman. Who's that? A man of integrity, quiet charm, and eternal faithfulness. Familiar with the arts and the sciences, a philanthropist, and a sportsman. In short, everything you're not. <laughs> yeah, but everything I'd like to be. All I need is a girl like you to hold my hand and guide me. Is this a proposal of marriage? Who knows? In the meantime, just hold my hand. Let's go. Two oh eight Greenwich Street, please. Drive slow. Very slow. What's the matter, afraid of accidents? Harriet, you are about to embark on a wonderful adventure. Honey. Well, honey, do something. Either squeeze back or honk like a horn. Now, really, there's no sense in us acting like we're in two different cabs. Harriet, I've been studying you all evening, and I have a question. When do you come out of the deep freeze? I've been studying you all evening, too, Teddy. Baby. How much money do you have in the bank? Oh, oh I'm sorry, Harriet. Yeah, I'll give you right. hold these and I'll get the rest no, of them. No, forget oh, about the pearls. Here. The real ones are in the safe. Let's stick to the subject. You've got $3,329 in commissions coming. How much have you got in the bank? What kind of perfume do you use? Expensive. Why? Funny. I smell a rat. Very funny. Look, Miss Boyd. I was pushing a hand truck through the garment center while you were still punching for your gold pen in the diaper service. I know things about this business you'll never grow old enough to learn, but you fooled me. It took me a little now to recognize the itch that you've got. I must have been blind because it sticks out all over you like a bad case of hives. Go on, Mr. Sherman. You've got the blueprint. Read it. Sure. You're going to start a new dress firm and get rich, you think. You've been yakking to Cooper, a top factory man. I'm supposed to be the salesman, and somewhere else there's another sucker, a designer. But what may I ask? Just exactly what have you got? Would you like to see? Yeah, I'm free the rest of the night. All right, then I'll show you.
That's our 807. That's right. So you talk Patini into coming in with you, too, huh? Poor pull but kill. Knifed from within. No Bettini the designer, no Cooper the inside man, no Teddy Sherman the salesman. You're quite a little pusher. The design is mine. What? These sketches are mine, Mr. Sherman, mine. And it took me three months to convince Bettini to use them under his own name. He did, and you know what happened. You? Me. You didn't by any chance happen to steal these sketches from Bettini, did you? I don't steal from paupers. Ask Cooper, he knows. Convinced? Suppose I am. Suppose you are a designer. Suppose you're even a good one. Why, you go out into that jungle, they'll cut you up into little pieces. Do you think you know this business? Yes, I think I know this business. I know plenty, and I've learned it the hard way. I've worked days and studied nights. I modeled those 7th Avenue dogs while cheap salesmen and buyers from the West clawed all over me. I've been pinched, patted, and kissed. Fought my way out of cabs, bars, and hotel rooms, but I've learned this business. It took a strong stomach, but I've learned it. And now I've got the best inside man there is. I'm the best designer, and Paul Betkel says you're the best salesman. Tell me, Miss Boyd, what are you dreaming about nights? Cadillacs and a duplex on Park Avenue? That's just what I dream about, all the time. And so now, with my job, time, and money, you want to take a gamble on a racket that beats two, three hundred established firms a year? I thought I had brass, Miss Boyd. I am not in your league. Exactly what I told Cooper. You're not in our league. Teddy Sherman, I said, they mint that type like pennies and billions. The all-American slob. You've spent ten years in this business selling other people's stuff, and there you stand. Teddy Sherman, with 36 suits in the closet, each with a penny in the pocket, all adding up to 36 cents. Come around for a job someday when you're broke. Wait a minute. I've got something for you. That's for the cab. The analysis was for free. You can forget about the necklace. You don't owe me a thing. Good night. Miss Boyd, you have the simple and astonishing beauty of an old-fashioned straight razor. How much have you got? Enough. Throw away the pipe. How much in cash? Cooper has 10000 I can raise 7500 How about you? The same. Interested? Play around in dollar bills and we'll talk. That's a deal. History will record this sacred moment. Here lies Teddy Sherman. She offered him an apple, he lost his head. You'll never lay your hands on that insurance money, Harriet. Your father left it to me. It's for Marge when she gets married. And what about me? I'm a daughter, too. But you don't need it the way Marge does. You've got the looks and the talent and the ability to make money. It takes money to make money. That kind you'll either marry or steal. Ma, that money's no good. It'll buy Marge four rooms of cheap furniture, a washing machine, and a middle-aged spread, if she ever gets married. And what about you? When your father died, I gave up hoping for myself. Once I hoped for you. But you're a throwback to an Irish bandit in the hills of Killarney. I want to see Marge married to Ray. I want them to start without worry. And what'll you do? Live a week with her and a week with me? A woman without money, without independence, without pride? Taking crumbs off some son-in-law's table? Is that what you want? Ma, with that $5,000, I can make you independent. We'll have plenty left over for Marge. Then she, she won't have to marry some poor schnook like Ray, who'll spend the rest of his life almost winning cases in the court of small claims. With money, she'll be able to marry any man she wants. A nice outlook on life. It's the outlook men taught me. And some man will teach you what's wrong. The answer's no. Mm, it's getting 
late, Ray. So what? Nobody gets ahead if he's a clock watcher. <laughs> Come here. How about asking me in for some coffee? But we just had coffee. Well, we don't have to drink it. <laughs> What's that? Baby, how would you and Ray like to go to Bermuda on your honeymoon? Wake me up when you get in, Harriet. Is she crazy? Harriet! Baby, wait till you hear. What? Hey, what did you do? Rob a bank? What's this all about? Oh, the most wonderful thing in the world. They came to me, to me. Sam Cooper and Teddy Sherman, they're going into business. And they want me to be their designer. You mean the, the top designer? The only designer, the oh. designer. And in my own business, I'm going to be a partner. Well, congratulations, Harriet. That's wonderful. And I told them all about you, Ray. And I made them promise to let you draw up all the contracts. You'll get one the Supreme Court couldn't break with a meat axe. <laughs> oh, Harriet, it's really come true. And it's what you've always dreamed about. A lot of dreams are going to start coming true. Things Mama's always dreamed about. And you. That little place you and Ray want in Queens. One good season and I'll buy it for you. Say, wait a minute. I couldn't let you do a thing like that. Oh, stop being proud with your sister-in-law. It's a loan. You can pay me back. At 6%, if it'll make you feel any better. <laughs> oh, I feel so wonderful. I want to get all dressed up in a beautiful new gown. Why don't you two kids get married right away? I'm not joking about that trip to Bermuda. <laughs> oh, let's all have a drink on it. Go ahead, Marge. Make some coffee. All right. You know, you're pretty wonderful. Oh, don't waste that on me. This is the wrong girl. Operator, I think my phone is out of order. Will you ring me, please? Skylar 74322. But, Sam, I can't. I just haven't got it. Two weeks. I couldn't raise that kind of money in 200 years. Sure, I know it isn't your fault. You can't help it. Good night, Sam. What's the matter, honey? I just want to lay down and die. But what happened? It's all off. The whole thing. The bank says we need more cash. They'll have to get a designer who can put up his share of the money. I'm sorry, kids. Oh, what a rotten break. I'd give anything in the world if I could help her. Me with less than 400 bucks in the bank. I wanted you to understand. I just wanted you all to know how bad I feel about this. You only think you feel bad now. For over 30 years, I've been on this street. Every minute, every day, I learned the same lesson. Don't go into business for yourself. And you, Teddy? You sleep well at night? Me? Hmm. Like a dummy in a sleep shop window. Tomorrow you won't. Right, Herman? For over 13 years, I haven't had a good night's sleep. Only when I work for somebody else. That's the only time I slept. Hello. Maybe for Teddy is all right. A young man needs a bankruptcy. It helps him to mature. But you, Sam, you are a warrior. You'll lose weight. You'll get sick. In front of your eyes, Sam, from now on, spots with zeros. Mm -hmm. Haven't we treated you right? You want more money? We'll give you a raise. You want to take your wife to Jones Beach? I'll lend you my Buick. Take my Cadillac. Take my wife. Don't leave. But he has left. Let's call off the Cold War, gentlemen. Mr. Cooper is in business with Teddy and me. We've hired a law. Papers are drawn and signed. All we're trying to do is say goodbye. Serpent! He gave you a chance. 
And now you steal the best inside man, the best salesman in town. Listen, Cooper, you got a house half paid for. A daughter in business college, a son in high school, a wife with a washing machine, and you want to risk all that just to call yourself a boss. Just to gamble. And end up in six months with your hat in your hand and your creditors howling like wolves for your blood. They'll take your house. Your children will go to work. Then you and your wife will be back in the factory without a penny, without a future, with nothing but bad memories. That's the garment business. For every successful business, that doesn't fail. I thought about this, and I've given my word to my partners, Teddy and Harriet. We intend to work hard and take a risk in order to be independent. I think that's a good thing. I admit sometimes I'm afraid I'm doing a foolish thing. Where would you all be if you didn't take a foolish risk once in a while? A man can't live his whole life worrying if what he's doing is safe. To live is to take a chance. I took a chance when I came to this country. I'm taking a chance now. But I've two friends who I trust. Well, we tried. My partners and I decided to give each of you a month's wages and good wishes. You got the bug. Good luck. Sam. 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 I've been offered a situation as manager of the shipping and delivery department of a new dress firm that will soon dominate the field. Well, what do you expect, a counteroffer? No, gentlemen. But on behalf of the new firm, I say, move over. You is on its way. Harry, wait for me. I've been taking this elevator down for 15 years. Today, for the first time, I got a sinking feeling in my stomach. That makes me feel better. I see we're all a little scared. Main floor. I want you to... Who are they from? Who sent these flowers? These are from us to us. Mr. Sherman ordered them. Flowers we don't need to make dresses. Zippers we need. So hang them up and run quick Sam, to 6th Avenue. please stay where I can find you. What about 304? When can we promise delivery? Two weeks. Hey. Ten days. Uh, Teddy, why the flowers? Are we so rich we can afford to wish ourselves good luck? Sam, stop worrying. We're in. Hermione Griggs is writing an order that will carry us for months. She better write two orders like that. Then maybe we'll be able to pay for the carpets and the fancy drapes. Why did we need such an expensive showroom, Teddy? Because it sells dresses, Sam, that's why. Now, come on, come on in and smile. Bill's confidence. Sheboyko dresses. Yes, sir? Thank you, sir. I'll tell him you called. Hello. Oh, yes, sir? I see you don't know who I am. No, sir. This is my first day. I'm Ellie Cooper, Mr. Cooper's daughter. Oh? Uh, I'm Mr. Arnold Fisher. Head of the shipping department. Now take a letter. To all members of the shipping department, important. Welcome to Sheboyko Dresses Incorporated. In order to conserve string, comma, all packages are to be tied with a figure eight knot, comma, the ends not more than uh, two inches long, period. Sign Arnold Fisher, manager. Four eyes. Four eyes. You still here? I need you inside, Joe. Here. You finish sweeping, then run over to Sixth Avenue for those zippers. Yes, Mr. Cooper. Good morning, good morning. Mr. Sherman in? Oh, yes, sir. Who shall I say oh, is called? Oh, never mind, honey. You don't have to be formal with me. I'm an old friend. Yes, sir. He's in the showroom. Thank you. General Sherman. <laughs> Hello, Johnny. How are you? 
Savage is in town. Yeah, I only have to hear the sound of his voice when I get a hangover. He's the biggest account in the business, Teddy. You better be nice to him. Come on. By the way, how's about lunch? Absolutely. Dinner? Oh, I'm afraid that's out, honey. My nights belong to Savage. I'm the chaperone. Who chaperones the chaperone? <laughs> Savage, old man, I've been looking for well, you. Well, there you are. And Hermione, honey, how are you? <laughs> see you later, Teddy. I see you at lunch, huh? Well, Teddy, my boy, congratulations. Thanks. What do you think of it? Not bad, not bad at all. But these fixtures have a familiar look. Bone mode frocks before they went bankrupt. <laughs> Are you good and hungry for a real great fall line? Well, Teddy, you know me. With this half, I buy dresses. With this half, I'm good and hungry. Now, how about something out of that little black book of yours for tonight? Huh? <laughs> You're on. Terry, come here, will you? Put these in my office, please, honey. <laughs> how nice they fit into the dresses. <laughs> Say, that's nice, too. It's my partner. Harriet. Harriet, come here, will you, honey? It's Mr. Savage, Miss Boyd, our designer. Well, delighted, I'm sure. Hello. My, how he picks them even for partners. <laughs> and how he picks them even for customers. Oh. <laughs> Say, haven't I met you before? Yes, you have. I thought... Why, of course. Why, you've come up in the world. Tell me, how is your sick mother? <laughs> oh, uh, she's much better now. <laughs> good, good. And night school? I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Teddy, I want her to sell me. Now, why shouldn't I enjoy it? <laughs> sure, just don't skip on the order. I'm sure Mr. Savage is going to like everything we Say, if I like it with him, I'm going to love it with you. <laughs> oh, say, and Teddy, yeah. don't forget, Gilmore's tonight at 8, as usual. As usual. <laughs> right. Sit right here, Mr. Savage. I'll be with you in a minute. Well, Teddy. Yeah. Lunch? I am stuck with Hermione. Oh. Honey, murder him. All right, already. So was a gag. Stinker. What'd I do wrong? I'm a typical American boy. You humiliated me. I was merely trying to impress the boss's daughter. Look, someday we'll get married. I'll be head of the firm. We'll educate our children in Switzerland. And in the magazines, you'll see my picture. Arnold Fisher, man of distinction. In my hand, a glass of whiskey and seltzer. You're blocking my way, Mr. Four Eyes. I'm blocking her way. She's blocking my whole future. Hi, Joe. You got it? Naturally, I got it. You asked me to get it, so I got it. How much? For you, wholesale, with 15% off for personal printing. How much? 500. 350. 350? I'll take it. Could I interest you in the diamond wedding ring? No. The guy just got it back from his girl this morning. A bargain. And you're premature. This is a bargain. Don't tempt me. She's tempting me. That's plenty. Good evening, Mr. Sherman. How Fine. are you? Fine. Good. Thanks. Evening, Gilmore. Evening, Mr. Sherman. Mr. Savage is in the dining room. Fine. Mr. Sherman? Yeah, excuse me. He's in there with another girl. What? He's got a girl with him. Take care of him, will you, Mac? Okay, Mr. Sherman. What to be, girls? Martini. And make it a double. I'm starved. Oh, I told him off good. <laughs> you should have seen his face. Hello. Oh, hi, you, Teddy. Say, you know Miss Boyd, don't you? <laughs> yeah, we met. Any trouble closing the order? Oh, no. Say, she's the greatest little designer and saleswoman in the business. But I wouldn't sign till she'd have dinner with me, would I, honey? Mm -hmm. She mix up the two sides of your brain? <laughs> yeah, she sure did. Feels fine, too. Let's not talk business anymore. I'm hungry. You hungry, Teddy? No, I always eat before I come here. What about our date? I got a date. You say, waiter, please, bring us two more. Yes, sir. And Mr. Sherman? Well, he's with another party. Hadn't you better run along, Teddy? Your friends are waiting. <laughs> you run along. They're waiting for him, too. <laughs> you think I'd pass this up for any of those? Never mind the details. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, Teddy. See you tomorrow. There's lots of time tomorrow. I ordered 1,500 pieces. <laughs> She's a great salesman, your partner. 
And she's cute, too. Real cute, aren't you, cute? <laughs> yes, sir. She's gonna take real good care of me. Why don't you shut up, and why don't you go home? You don't have to do this to get orders. Do what, Teddy Dog? Spoon feed this drunk. That's now, why just I don't a want minute, you to do it. You can't talk like this in front of a lady. Now, don't you take your buyers out, wine them, dine them, and amuse them? That's different. How? Because I'm a man, and you're supposed to be a lady. That's why it's different. How? I'll write your letter. In the meantime, let's go. Now, look here, German. This lady's in my car. I don't want you to pull the rest in front of the whole world. This place is full of my friends. Now, let's go. Just a minute. Why, you... Forget it. All we lost was an order. You lost more than an order. You lost me. This just shows you how much I like you. Who asked you to show me? Taxi! I couldn't help myself. You know how I feel about you. Sure, I'm part of the Teddy Sherman circus. Do you think I got in this business with you and Cooper just for money? You've been on my mind ever since that first night we went out. And I've begun to like it. The more I like it, the less I like to see you selling yourself to a buyer like a prize that comes in a box of Cracker Jacks. You mean like yourself and those lady buyers from the Southern Circuit? What kind of talk is that? You're the kind of girl I can marry. Didn't you hear me? I'm proposing to you. What do you expect me to do, throw my arms around you? When you marry someone, it'll be to rope her off while you go on playing the field. Can't you get it through your head? I love you. You love me. You mean you want to own me? worked and schemed to get a business started just so I could be free of men like you, so I could belong to myself. Listen, Harriet. You love me so much that for the sake of that crummy male ego of yours, you're ready to take something I've worked for and dreamed about all my life and kick it under a barroom table. That's how much you love me. All right, I'll carry you back in there and dump you in Savage's lap. But that finishes it. I want out. Get yourself another partner. Oh, no. I've got a partner. You, the best in the business. And you're going to help me get rich. The contract is signed, sealed, delivered, unbreakable. And you won't get out, never. So make up your mind to like it. Taxi! What are we gonna do now, honey? I'm hungry. Sorry. All I got is pearls. I wish they were oysters. and get these girls through the rain without getting them wet. I suppose they do get a little wet. What does that mean in human history? In this human's history, plenty. Are you favoring the industry with your presence, my good man? Can I take it off my income tax? Naturally. It's a business deduction. Entertainment. I presume, therefore, you're going. It's a must. A person must be seen there to establish his position in the industry. Would your position in the industry you stay in Brooklyn? I should report your impertinence to the janitorial department. Ladies and gentlemen, when the committee first asked me to introduce our guest of honor, I was naturally very proud and happy. But since he is truly a man who needs no introduction, I said that I thought my remarks should be brief and to the point. Well, that didn't fool the committee. They made me show them my speech anyway. <laughs> and so briefly, but with deep pleasure and pride, I give you that great merchant prince, that man whose stores are national centers of taste and elegance, that great friend of the Garment Center, Mr. J. F. Noble. With all your influence, why are we sitting in the bleachers? Are we supposed to be hiding from someone? Ladies and gentlemen, 
As a means of expressing my gratitude to you for your flattering invitation to be here tonight, I shall try to prove myself the equal of your Toastmaster in brevity, if not in wit. <laughs> Sam, would you please However, explain to Miss Boyd that the reason we're sitting back here is that this is the section reserved for those who manufacture dresses. Halfway up is reserved for those who whip up frocks, and right at the platform itself, the distinguished designers of gowns. Tell him I want to design gowns. Tell her to take it up with Noble. I don't blame her. With that gown, she should be sitting on the platform next to Noble. That's probably what she's been thinking. That's exactly what I've been thinking. And it comes true not only for the privileged handful, for those who can raise the capital with which to start a business, but for those with no more than native ability and energy, for all those, in fact, that have what is commonly known as the stuff, plus, of course, a little luck. <laughs> I could ask the lady with Noble to go home. You could if she'd talk to you. Well, she'd talk to me. As a matter of fact, she'd dance with me. What do you plan to do, go up and pinch her? That isn't done in some circles, you know. You have to be introduced. Don't go away, Miss Boyd. Excuse me. Also, Minsk Warsaw from Belfast and Madrid and as I did myself from London to cross the broad Atlantic in steerage. A chance to move from the side of the railroad tracks on which they were born to the side on which life looks and, let's face it, is better. <laughs> what is with Teddy? Where is he going? Don't worry, he'll be right back. Because you are all a part of the promise of America's fulfillment. A piece of the shining promise made by the new world to the sons and daughters of the old. <laughs> Yet, the Garment Center is more than the home of an industry in which success can be achieved with no more than the talents parceled out by fate at birth. The Garment Center is also a state of mind. It is the Mecca to which the pilgrim's route lies, not across the desert, by camel caravan, but across Manhattan by way of the IRT subway. <laughs> Anybody can raise the fare. All of you have. And the Mecca is the fulfillment of great ambitions, the success of great talents, the reward of intelligence and energy. And so I say, long live Seventh Avenue. I'm proud of it. I'm proud of all of us, and especially of you, I thank you. Mr. Noble prefers to advance the women that uh, fall in love with him through careers, not marriage. I'm running the lingerie department of the Chicago store. You happy? Reasonably. You? Reasonably. I'm in business for myself. That, that is with two partners. One of them's an angel. The other one's a louse. <laughs> Come on, let's dance over there. I want to show you off to them. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Cooper. Hello, Hello Mr. Cooper. Where did you get the money? We crashed. All it cost was twenty-two fifty for the tux. Teddy, I, I mean, Mr. Sherman got it for me wholesale. Didn't you hear, Noble? All I need is talent, energy, and brains, commodities with which I'm extravagantly endowed. Positively loaded. Come on, Ellie. Let's get on that dance floor. We got to get our money's worth. See you later, Mama. Yes, Excuse dear. Excuse me. <laughs> Will you look at that? Oh, that, that doesn't bother me. I'm not jealous anymore. Well, you don't understand. That's one of my partners. Oh, the angel. No, not the angel. 
I never suspected that a buyer's ball could be so entertaining. I must write to the committee and apologize for putting them off all these years. It's been a lovely evening, but now I must finish my nightcap and go. Nightcaps are meant to be lingered over, not to be finished. Oh, I'm sorry, but it's late, and I'm a working girl. This nightcap will have to be finished. Oh, very well. I've been meaning to ask you where you got that lovely dress. I designed it myself. I'm one of those pilgrims in the 1095 line who wants to achieve the mecca of gowns, as at Nobles. <laughs> I did use that phrase, didn't I? I can only say that I hoped no one would remember it. I assumed you wanted everyone to remember everything you were saying. In my position, I find that the only people who ever remember what I say are those who want something from me. Well, what's wrong with that? What you have is what people should want. Well, I'm not objecting. As a matter of fact, they're words that describe thoughts I've had, things I've felt. When you said people, I translated Harriet Boyd. When you said talent, I said mine. And when you said luck, I said it had to be my luck. Well, good night. You're sure you don't want me to drive you home? No, thanks. You really pride yourself on your independence, don't you? I noticed you left your partner without an excuse or even a good night. Well, why shouldn't I? Usually when men have beautiful women for partners, pleasure and business get mixed up. In our partnership, our only pleasure is business. Then you need a change. Either your point of view or your partner. Good night. Hold that right there for me, Terry. Sure. Gee, Miss Boyd, I don't see how you think of these things. I guess maybe it's a gift, huh? Mm, fancy. Just a little something I'm whipping up for myself, Sam. It's beautiful, Harriet. But come down from the clouds for a minute. I want to talk to you about Pongees. There's a manufacturer closing up in yourself for nothing. If you got a spring design for the material, it's a smart deal. Buy it. You got a design? I'll have one. Good girl. <laughs> there. Now that's what I was looking for. You can get out of that without pulling all the pins loose? Sure. What are you going to show, Renee? 712. Show it in the blue. It suits your coloring best. Yes, Miss Boyd. Gee, Mr. Sherman. He is a member of the family. I just spoke to Sam. You're making a mistake with the Why? It's an old-fashioned material and it won't sell. Make it sell. I'm against it. Settle it with Cooper. Can you leave those sketches alone for a minute? Harriet, listen to me. You're involved in this. You're supposed to be designing the spring line, unless, of course, it's all too dull since you got your claws in the noble. Not blood, ink. Very funny. I'm telling you, there's plenty you can do. You could drop a hint around the house. I want to be a salesman. Look, Ellie, you've got to think of me like I was a relative. On whose side? My mother's or my father's? All right, make jokes. Uh, excuse me. You're buying or selling? Are uh, you one of the partners here? Mr. Noble, uh, my heartfelt apologies. What can I do for you, Mr. Noble, sir? Is Miss Boyd in? Why, yes, sir. Uh, have a seat, sir. I'll call her. I'll inform her of your presence. Yeah. Mr. Noble. Well, well. The mountain has come to Mohammed. Come in, Mr. Noble. Could you go for him? What kind of a question is that, Arnold Fisher? Hello. This is my partner, Teddy Sherman. Teddy, Mr. Noble. Well, if we're going to be formal, Harriet, I'm Mr. Sherman, you're Miss Boyd, and our visitor's Mr. Noble. But if we're not, I'm Teddy Sherman, you're Harriet Boyd, and you're... Mr. Noble. If anyone wants me, I'll be at my club. I waited for you to call, and when you didn't, I did. Is your spring line? Yes. It's very nice. 
Did I bore you? Oh, no. Then why didn't you press your advantage? I didn't know I had one. Well, here I am. What's this? Just doodling. Mm -hmm. Would you like to have lunch with me and go to a fashion show? I would. There's some new things in from Paris I'd like to have your comments on. You should doodle more often. Well, if I'm encouraged, I might. Don't I look encouraging? Like it? Yes, I like it very much. After you. Thank you. Like this one? Oh, it's lovely, but it's impractical. The only place a woman could wear a gown like this would be in a perfume ad. Lorene. Good afternoon, Mr. Noble. Uh, what is the reaction on this one? Oh, the men like it, but the women know you can't sit down in it. <laughs> now, what about this? I'd lower the neckline a bit to make it more formal. Mm -hmm. And this? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought it had a certain flair. Well, it wouldn't have on a hanger. The model brought her flair with her. Do you believe in hunches? No. Well, I do. I have a hunch that you and I should have a serious talk. And tonight. Oh, I believe in that. Well, are we about ready for the unveiling? In a minute. I've switched a few of your ideas around. I hope you don't mind. I expect them to be switched around. I also expect them to be improved. About that, we'll know in a minute. There. That does it. You're a fabulous girl. You're not in the least bit nervous, are you? Nervous? Why should I be? Your work is about to be judged by, if you will forgive me, J.F. Noble. Now, don't you care whether I like it or not? I care very much. Then you are sure that I'm going to? No. I'm just sure it's good. Well? It has everything I expected it to have. But it's incomplete. Here's how I'd like to see it finished. Harriet of Nobles. Harriet of Nobles. Like the way it sounds? Oh, yes. Yes, I like it very much. Do you mind if I speak frankly? You going to say something disagreeable? <laughs> Naturally. I'm going to say that if you think I'm interested in you personally as a woman, you're wrong. But I know what you need and what you want. You have ambition and talent, and I can help you fulfill them. With my help, you can jump from that 1095 business of yours to the top of your profession. In a few years, you can become one of the leading designers in the country. It's exactly, exactly what I want. Then take it. The offer's open. But I have two partners, a small business, and an unbreakable contract for five years. You will find a way to break it. May I use the design? It's a present. Thank you. You know, if we're going to work together someday, you should be entirely frank with me. No, oh, wasn't I? No. You are interested in me as well as my talent. I suppose I am. Why did you deny it? Because it might complicate things for... Harrier to nobles. I'm complicated. And I'm simple. I only know what I want. I think we both know what we want. Well, the offer is still open, Harriet. But it won't be forever. Don't you tell me to be quiet. I don't care who hears me. I'm not going to stand for any more of this kind of thing. I'm not blind and I'm not a fool. I know exactly what you've been up to and you won't get away with it. Do you hear me? You won't get away with it. If you people don't want me in this company, say so. 
Come out and say it and stop conspiring against me. I slave over those sketches. What do you think I've got to work with making a dress for 1095? And when I finally get something, this is what you do with it. But Harriet... This is not the dress I designed and you know it. Please, Harriet, if something is wrong... Miss Boyd, Mr. Sherman says to hold it down. You can hear you in the showroom. That's not a dress, it's a nightmare. What right have you got to make changes without my permission? But Harriet, it's just exactly like... It me. is not! This collection of rags you've sewn together is not the dress I designed. Here. Look at this. You're not hanging wallpaper, Sam. This is supposed to be a dress. Something for a human being to wear. And look, what's this supposed to be? Some kind of a joke? And this, and this. Gee, Miss Boyd, what'd you do that for? All right, everybody get busy. This isn't a sideshow. What's going on? What happened to you? She did it. I don't have to take this from her or anybody. I got a good mind to quit. Don't quit so fast. You'll get a formal apology in the morning. In the meantime, get into 7-12. There's a buyer waiting to see it. Okay, let's have it. I suppose changing my design was your idea. What? What design? This! 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 If he wants to design the dresses around here, let him. This isn't mine. You crazy? Stop yelling at Cooper. Teddy, it's all right. It's not all right. What kind of a performance is this, anyway? If you two don't like what I'm doing, I'll get out. I don't like how you sound. I don't like the tone of your voice. I want you to behave yourself, Harriet. I want you to treat people around here as though they were almost as good as you are. Do you understand? Do you understand? Hey, it's all right, Harry. It's all right. If a person doesn't feel good, it's the sickness that talks, not the person. It's all right. Oh, Sam, I'm sorry. I'm all on edge. The thing is, it's exactly like the sketch. But exactly. And now, all day long, she sits in her office. She doesn't even go out for lunch. Every two minutes, she changes her mind. I'll have to stay in wake tonight. The designs are all late. Are they any good? Sure, very good. Look. I don't know. It's a mystery to me. I walk in, and bang, the house falls on me. I think I'll have to have a long talk with our friend. Yeah. Teddy, no more yelling. Please. I don't yell when I'm serious. After all, in the genius, we got to expect temperament, not good manners. She's a high-strung type, Teddy, oversensitive. And so what are we, elephants? Well, good night, Miss Boyd. Good night. Let's take a walk together. No, I'm going home to bed. I have a terrible headache. Walk in the fresh air will help. Nothing will help. Don't be too sure. Sometimes you forget there's such a thing as fresh air in New York, or other things in the world besides business. <clears throat> Go ahead, it's your turn. Now you breathe. What's killing you? Me. How come? Overworked, overtired, overeager, overambitious, overworried. I'd like to forget I ever wanted to be a designer. I'd like to forget I ever wanted to be rich. Why? It's the pressure. Every season, a new gamble. Will the designs be good? Will they sell? Will we go broke? And it's all on me. I can ruin the whole business in one week. I don't sleep at night. I've hardly slept in... I don't know how long. You see a doctor? We're practically married. Well, what does he say? He told me to quit. I told him I couldn't. Looks like I'll have to. I'm no use to anyone this way. That's right. I used to think my sister Marge was a dope. But she's happy. I'd like to quit, but... 
What about you and Sam? Never mind about me and Sam. Let's talk about me and you. No. Why not? I... I don't want to. Harriet, I... Look, you stay here and breathe. I'm going home. There's only one suggestion I can make, Harriet. What's that? Throwing me out of the company? Worse than that. What could be worse than that? You could marry me. How could you possibly want me to marry you? Sounds crazy, doesn't it? I never stopped thinking about it. I don't think I haven't tried. I can't tell if what you're doing is right or wrong. And what's more, I don't care. Now, what are you crying for? Because I'm crazy, that's why. Harriet, you go home and stay there. Don't come into the office. Forget the business. I'd burn the place down if I thought it'd make you happy for one minute. I don't want to be happy. I'm a fast-talking salesman from 7th Avenue. But you make me feel like a boy in love. Well, get me a cab, boy. I want to go home. I'll take you there. You know, I want to go home by myself. I've got a lot to think about tonight. A lot to think about. Don't wait, Joe. I'll be a little while. I think she took a tumble from her high horse. What do you mean? I asked her to marry me. And? She didn't say no. Good. She's all upset, Sam. She needs a vacation, and I got an idea. I think I'll tell her we've decided to give her a European trip. Let her go to Paris, see the spring showings. You know, she dreams of those things. I'll pay for it, but we'll tell her it's the company. As soon as I finish the sales trip on the road, I'll fly over, meet her. We'll have a good time, get married, and be back in time for next season. The company will pay for it. No. Yes. I'll pay for it. You think her happiness and yours isn't my business? You know, she's home right now, kicking herself to pieces. I think I'll go tell her. Tell her all the partners are agreed. Well? Run, Casanova, before she wakes up and knows what a bad bargain she's getting. <laughs> Boyd, please. Nobody's home. You sure? Mrs. Boyd just went to the hospital. What? Her daughter was just taken there. Where? Midtown. She just left. Taxi! Hey, taxi! Hey! Cab! Hey, cab! Oh, Teddy, isn't it wonderful? It's a boy. What? It's a boy. What do you mean? And it was nothing. It was just like when I had Harriet. I tell you, Marge wasn't in that delivery room more than 15 you, minutes. You mean this is... Well, congratulations. <laughs> Grandma. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Where's Harriet? Come on, Ma. We can see her now, just for a minute. Teddy, how about that? Congratulations, huh? If I had a cigar, I'd give you a cigar. Well, here, I'll give you a cigar. <laughs> is Harriet in with her? Harriet, her only sister, and she couldn't even wait for the baby to be born. A dinner date. That's more important. Dinner date? With whom? With whom do you think? Skip it, Ma. Come on, Ma, let's go. No, no, don't skip it, Ma. A dinner date with whom? With Mr. Noble. What's happened to her, Teddy? I used to think that maybe you and she... Ma, will you come on? We only got a minute. Teddy... You, you better go in to Marge. 
Say hello for me. I'm sorry, Jay, but... Well, that's how I feel. Having wounded my vanity both as a man and as a... What was it they called me? Uh, yes, a merchant prince. Would you mind telling me just why you changed your mind? It's very simple. You're very attractive and so is your offer. But I think in the long run I can get more out of my own business. It'll take longer. But I'll have more when it's over. Oh? I'll have... myself, for instance. And let's not slight that young partner of yours. You'll have him, too, won't you? Yes. And I'll have all of him. And I thought that a little of me would be worth all of him. I thought so, too, once. But I don't think so anymore. I see. Do you mind if I keep that sketch? I gave it to you. I'm going to have it framed and hung up in my office with a motto underneath. Never underestimate the competition from 7th Avenue. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello. Oh, he is? No. No, tell him to come up. We have an uninvited guest. Or was he invited? That's your partner. My partner? Yes, Mr. Sherman. He's on his way up. I must confess I'm a little puzzled. Is he coming here as an outraged lover or as a protector to deliver you from the lion's den? I should like to know what role he's playing so as to determine what part to play myself. I'm sorry, Harriet, but it would have been stupid of me not to let him come up. After all, he must know that you're here. Of course. Ah, good evening, Mr. Sherman. This will only take a minute. I see that Dr. Noble is the cure for what ails you. Oh, well, there's plenty for everyone. Uh, may I pour you a martini? I didn't come here to join your little party, Mr. Noble. I came to take back a few things I said to my partner this afternoon. Teddy, listen to me. Listen to you. You... I suppose you got a good story to cover this, too. Well, you're both celebrating too soon. I want to tell you something, Mr. Noble, that Harriet once told me. She'll never get out of our deal. She's going to stick and make me rich and make our company a success. Teddy. You'll design overalls if I want you to, and you're going to like it. You lied, cheated, and double-crossed your way out of a model's room into a partnership with me and Cooper. And now you're lying, cheating, and trying to double-cross your way into something better. Well, you can stop trying. You're stuck. Well, stop screaming like a 7th Avenue salesman. I am a 7th Avenue salesman, but I'm nobody's Teddy. Not even Harriet's. Harriet of Nobles. You mean Nobles Harriet. And I won't tell Cooper about your dirty little scheme. He likes you. I might break his heart. Can you get me out of it? He loves you, but he wants to own you because he's a man who has nothing. I have everything, and all I want is to share my pleasure in it with you. Can you get me out of it? Yes. I've given Ellie a list of the dates and the places where I'll be. You can expect the first orders in a week. Take me along, Mr. Sherman. You can double the business. Don't be in such a hurry to grow up and become a favorite. <laughs> be good, Ellie. If you can't be good, at least get in on time, will you? <laughs> Goodbye, Sam. Harriet, I can't stand such a thing, such an atmosphere. Two partners not talking to each other. Here are some sketches for the new line. Harriet, wait. I don't understand. A gown for 1095 and made of these materials? You're crazy. Our prices are going up, Sam. Poor eyes, clear those material racks, all of them, right away, please. 
The new materials are coming in tonight. This is impossible. We're at 1095 pounds. We're forming a second corporation with your Boyko assets. Harriet Boyd Originals. They'll make the line. You... You'll do this without Teddy? I won't let you, Harriet. You can. What do you want me to do? Get down on my hands and knees and beg him to talk to me? We're in business to make a profit, aren't we? Yes. Well, the Harriet Boyd line has been guaranteed a profit of 50,000 for the first season. 50,000? Yes. I never want to see anything for 1095 again as long as I live. Hello? Yes. It's Dallas, Texas. Teddy. Hello? Teddy? How are you, Teddy? Fine, fine. I'm nailing you three fat ones and a whopper from Hermione Griggs. Yeah, you got that flow, got that rhythm. You working hard? Naturally, naturally. All right, Teddy, all right. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye. We're gonna have to tell him, Harriet. Every day we're in worse trouble. This is great trouble if you can get it. He keeps sending in orders and we can't fill them. Sam, listen to me. In four weeks, we've jumped from a cheap little dress house always on the verge of bankruptcy to a gown house. We have the noble stores as a client, a guaranteed profit on every garment, and a future as millionaires. Is that trouble? No, that's not trouble. Well, relax, Mr. Millionaire, and be happy. Till Teddy gets back, I'll try and be happy. Oh, Sam, now. Teddy Sherman is marching through the South. But believe me, the big battle will be on 7th Avenue. If it's a battle he wants, he'll get it. Got my word on it. No, okay. forget that. Anything goes wrong, you drop me a note personally. I'll take care of it. Righto. Bye. Let me see now. You are Miss Moore, right? Thank you very much, oh, Miss Moore. You, Mr. And Miss Tate, thank you very much, thank Miss you, Mr. Tate. Sherman. And you are Miss Lane. Thank you very much, Miss thank Lane. Thank you. Oh, just a minute, I'll take those. Girls, help yourselves any of the stuff that you want. Make yourselves right at home. Thank you again. See you next year. Bye. 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 Hello. Teddy, this is Hermione. Getting enough fried chicken? Plenty. You miss me? Just pick the models out of your hair and listen, dear. I'm confused. What do you mean, honey? I mean, honey, I want to do a big promotion on that order I gave you. And when I called Cooper and asked him when I could expect my first deliveries, all I got was double talk. Now, I can't sell double talk, Teddy. I can listen to it, but I can't sell it. Well, that's funny. Uh, maybe they're a little snowed under. OK, lover boy, but I need this stuff or I'll have to cancel. This isn't all romance. <laughs> Check. Bye now, I'll get back to you. All right. Hello, operator. I want to talk to Circle 72099 in New York City. All right, thank you. Hello? I have your party, sir. Go ahead. 
Hello, Sam. Hello, Teddy. Sam, what's with the orders? I'm getting complaints. We're doing what we can, Teddy. Well, it's just not good enough, Sam. What are you trying to do, sabotage the business? Better come home, Teddy. Come home? Why? Because that's why. Come home. We have uh, a little problem. All right, I'll clean up in Nashville. I'll catch the plane tomorrow. I'll be home day after tomorrow. What's up? I'll meet you at the airport. Why read the plane? Okay. They're lovely, really lovely, Miss Boyd. Thank you very much. And when do we get started on them, Mr. Noble? We'll probably release the New York advertising in a week. We'll be ready to make deliveries in three. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Boyd. Uh, Miss Chapman, will you come in, please? Yes, Mr. Noble? You can confirm the reservations for tomorrow night. And have Miss Boyd's baggage and mine picked up in the afternoon. Yes. And bring in the tickets right away, will you please? Certainly. It seems to me that you could resign yourself a little more gracefully to being rich and famous. What's the matter? I keep wondering what Teddy's going to say. Oh. Well, it'll be loud and unpleasant, no doubt. But why worry about it? If Mr. Sherman doesn't like what you've been doing, you can tell him that the dresses will be returned and the orders cancelled. That will effectively bankrupt your little company, and you'll be free next season instead of this one. But either way, you'll be at Noble's. Uh, really, Harriet, uh, your Mr. Sherman has no choice but to accept and grow rich. I suppose so. So stop thinking about it. Think about this instead. The layouts for the newspapers and the magazines. Harper's Bazaar, four full pages. And here's the picture of you that we're running in vogue. Well, I'll say this for you, Jay. You really keep your promises right down to the last, most extravagant part of them. By this time next week, you'll be comfortably settled in Paris. You'll be going to Paris every season to see the fashions. You're going to be very happy, Harriet. Am I? I've mapped out the plans for your whole life. All you've got to do is to follow them. I don't always follow other people's plans, Jay. It's an old habit of mine. To get you out of that partnership of yours, I've had to do a few things that violate some old habits of mine, such as making a deal that isn't one. But I'm not complaining, so long as everything is open and above board between us. We understand one another perfectly, don't we? Yes, of course we do. I'm just a little tired. That's all. A little edgy. Well, we can skip dinner tonight, if you'd rather rest. Oh, no, no, I want to go out to dinner. I can rest in Paris. Rest on the boat, my dear. No one rests in Paris. Thanks, Ma. What time are you expecting, Teddy? Six o'clock. I'm going to meet him at the office. I... I don't suppose you'd want me and your other relatives down to see you off? If that means no, I agree with you. right downstairs, Miss Boyd. I'll take care of this. The rest of the bags are in the bedroom. Thank you. How long will you be gone? Two months. I'll look for another apartment for myself. Why? You'll be needing one of your own from now on, I suppose. Stop that! I have to make my plans. Goodbye, Ma. Goodbye, Harriet.
let's have it. Not while you look so mad, Teddy. I can't talk to you. Sam, quit stalling. Relax a little first. At least finish your cigarette. Then I'll tell you. Well? All right. Teddy, I'm Mr. Sherman. Welcome home, Mr. Sherman. Or as we say in French, bonjour. We had a revolution, Mr. Sherman. Any casualties? Well, Miss Boyd's been waiting. She don't have much time. Her boat sails tonight. A boat? Where to? La Belle France. Where else? We're all in the haute monde right now. Couturier, Le Style. I'm going to night school to learn the right accent. Well, bonsoir. Bonsoir, Papa. Teddy, I want to talk to you. I've had a full report. And the quote for us, bon voyage. Is that all you have to say? Yeah. Oh, I almost put that. I got you going away present. One dollar. By next year, you'll be able to afford a real one as easily. I told you when we started this partnership that I'd make you rich. Well, I've delivered on my promises. I always do. Don't I, Sam? Always. If there's one thing about Harriet Boyd, she's a girl who delivers. Anywhere, anytime, any price. I don't see you turning down any of that dirty money. Look, partner, I know when I'm in a squeeze play. There's no contract on the orders. If I kick, Noble pulls the plug and our company goes down the drain bankrupt. Then you're free to go ahead with him. You get what you want anyway, it's played, and I can't stop you. So I won't try. I learned that lesson the first time five guys ever jumped me in an alley. But enjoy feeling sorry for yourself. You can afford it. I got a surprise for you. We decided not to afford it. You turned this whole thing into dirt, and Sam and I don't like dirt. We don't like living in it. Yeah, that's right, you heard me. We're not delivering. We're stopping production. We're closing down. We're out on the street, broke, flat, finished. Every dime we own or ever hope to own. Get it? Broke, out of business, bankrupt. You can't. I won't let you. You're going to deliver on those orders. The money's there. It's waiting for you. Well, it'll grow old and gray waiting for us. You wrecked our little dress business, and now we're going to wreck your big gown business. We're finished because we don't like what you've done. And you can't throw us a diamond studded bone and make us like it. Come on, Sam. Sam, he just wants to humiliate me. But you'll lose everything. Every penny you've ever saved. Your house, the work of a lifetime. You have a wife and a daughter. He's got nothing. He doesn't care. He just wants to make me feel like... Like what you are. Like what you always were. You cheap... <laughs> Sam. Ah, Teddy, such a fool. Always saying the wrong things. Of course. He was just bluffing. He was, wasn't he? He was just trying to scare me. To scare you? No. He didn't say what he wanted to say. That we both love you. I like a father. And Teddy, I like Teddy. You know him. A big hello joke, a laugh, but with his heart in his mouth. We are going bankrupt. We're closing up even though it means the end of all our plans and hopes. But not because we hate you. Teddy is right. When it comes to choose between money and someone you love, what choice can a man make? Good luck, Harry.
please. Oh, it's right here somewhere. How much time is there before the boat sails? Uh, about 15 minutes. That was the all ashore one. Uh, Oh, that's oh, sweet DA day, please. Uh, the passageway directly ahead, ma'am. Thank you very much. Hello. Have you seen Jay anywhere? Jay, what happened? Jay, I've got to talk to you. Come on, go ahead. No, I mean alone. Well, won't it wait till our guests leave? There isn't any time, please. Jay! Jay, we've got to postpone this trip. I beg your pardon. We've got to get off the boat. We can't sail. Harriet, you're not making sense. What are you talking about? They won't deliver the gowns. You've got to go back and make them deliver. You can do it through the banks, through the mills. You can force them to. But why? Why should I? Why? Don't you understand what I'm saying? They've deliberately decided to go bankrupt. Well, if they think they can afford the gesture, let them. I shall rejoin our guests. You mean you won't do anything? Certainly not. Jay. You've got to. I can't let them go bankrupt. Harriet, I will not make Mr. Sherman's solvency the basis of our relationship. If you can't be happy with me unless Mr. Sherman is happy too. That has nothing to do with it. We're leaving, Jay. Uh, just a minute. Quite simply, Harriet, I will not lift a finger to keep Sheboyka dresses from growing down the drain. If you want to prevent Mr. Sherman's bankruptcy, all you have to do is to go back to him. Go back to him? Yes, that is the choice you have to make. Sheboyka or Nobles, Teddy Sherman or me. And you haven't much time. Do you want me to go back to it? No, Harriet, I want you to stay. But only if you really want to stay. I have no intention of spending the best years of my life playing psychoanalyst to a woman who won't admit she's in love with another man. Me? In love with that big baboon, that loud-mouthed salesman with his lady buyers and his cheap wisecracks? Your description is a trifle cruel, perhaps, but that's the man I mean. That's ridiculous. I only want you to do this... Unfortunately, Harriet, you want too many things. You wanted to get out of a 1095 dress house into a bright and shining career at Nobles. I arranged that. Now you want to luxuriate in a happy conscience as well. That, I'm afraid, cannot be arranged. I was very happy to help you find fulfillment, but I feel under no obligation to find fulfillment for the man you love. I don't love him. So you keep saying. Of course, I can understand your reluctance to crawl back on your hands and knees. He'll probably insist on that. And we must admit with some justice. But crawling on one's hands and knees is good for the soul sometimes. It's a nice effect upon one's elevated notions. I know, I crawled once. But being a victim of great pride, I crawled too slowly and got back too late. Now, we wouldn't want that to happen to you, Harriet, would we? So if Mr. Sherman is the one you want, I suggest you start crawling. I don't want him. You're crazy. Am I? Very well, then. Let's leave Mr. Sherman to his little bankruptcy, say goodbye to our guests, and start unpacking. Last warning. All ashore that's going ashore. I'm sure you'll find your suite most attractive. I'm sorry, Jay. I'm sorry, too. Goodbye, Jay. I'll send you a postcard from Paris.
What about that ram from last season, Sam? What's the full amount? About fourteen hundred dollars even. That's enough for one night, Sam. We'll start again in the morning. I'm back. Why, did Noble catch you going through his pockets and have you thrown off the boat? No, not exactly. He told me I was in love with you. That's why he wouldn't let me stay. Because I was in love with you, he said. What about you? What did you say? I said, me in love with that big baboon, that cheap salesman, that... I forget now what I said. I don't forget so easy. I haven't forgotten a thing. Teddy, wait. Listen to me. Maybe Seventh Avenue is a jungle, but that doesn't mean that you have to live like a wild animal in it. Harriet found that out, so she came back. And remember, Teddy, it isn't easy to walk back in after you walk out. It's easier to stay out. And Harriet, it isn't easy to say, please come back. Besides, falling in love is always a mess. <laughs> what can you expect from two strangers? Let me at least introduce you. Teddy, this is Harriet. Harriet, this is Teddy. 